Welcome to Fresh Perspectives. My name is Gail, and my guests today are Bill Kewick. Uh, he, um, I talked him into finally um, uh, doing a program on massage therapy in, instead of just uh, organic gardening this time. And he brought a friend named Teresa along. Uh, she's gonna, um, he's going to demonstrate how to do a massage with her. Well, thank you uh, for coming on. Well, thanks for Bill. having us again. Yeah. Um, was there anything uh, you wanted to talk well, about before I, the demonstration? I thought, I thought I'd talk a little bit about the, like a very basic history of massage okay. and, uh, and a little bit about the biological reasons okay. why massage does what it does. And um, first of all, uh, as we heard earlier that uh, massage has been used for, for thousands of years and uh, the, the uh, most ancient cultures that uh, wrote about it were uh, in China and uh, in Egypt. And it's really considered like the most natural and uh, the most intuitive uh, type of massage or type of healing. And um, when, uh, and when you think about it, you could, I mean, you say, well, how does that really work? But you know, like if you, if you bump your head on something, you kind of like, oh, you know, you your rub your head. Your hand goes I mean, up it's, there, it's, yeah. That's, you know, very, a very simple type of massage. Or even if you bump your elbow on a door frame, you're like, you'll, you'll rub it. So that's, right. you know, kind of a natural uh, response that uh, what we all do uh, to, uh, um, you know, help relieve a little bit of pain. But uh, uh, I know Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, when he, as he got further and further into medicine, he dropped everything else. Ex the only thing he used was massage to uh, to heal Hippocrates people. Hippocrates did right. that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, it was, okay. He used only massage therapy. Well, he was the one that said, um, "Let your food be your let medicine your food and, be your medicine, right, and your medicine yeah. be your food." Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. But and then biological reasons. I, I always say that how it it actually works is the model I like to use. Is if you think of like the muscle tissue itself as being like a sponge. Uh, your your nerve tissue and your like little capillaries, your little micro blood vessels go through that that sponge, and so for whatever reason the muscle is tight. It, it could be from an injury, a car accident, a sports injury. Uh, it could be from overuse. It could be that you're you know clicking on your mouse too much and you're you're using your shoulder too much. Uh, so it could be from injury. It could be from overuse. Uh, it it could be from exercise. It could be just you know you you worked out too hard and the muscle gets tight. Uh, it could be from poor posture. So there's a number of reasons why the muscle gets tight. But again, we go back to the the, the model where we have this sponge with these tiny little. Um, structures going through it, the, the nerve tissue and the blood vessels. And so when that muscle gets tight, it can actually alter the pathway of the nerve for one. So a lot of times people say, oh, I, I feel like I have a pinched nerve. And I think most of us in our society think pinched nerve. They think, oh, the, 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 it's like this bone on bone, like crushing the, crushing the, nerve. the, the nerve in there. But it, it, that can happen. But there's two other things that are actually more likely. One tight too tight muscle fibers can actually bend that nerve tissue a little bit. So if you, if you know anything about electrical conductivity, if we took a, a piece of wire and uh, it was conducting electricity and we just took a hammer and we smashed it and crushed it down a little bit, it'll still conduct, but it's not gonna conduct in the same way. So the same way that two, um, two muscle fibers can actually alter the pathway of that nerve. Uh, another thing that can happen is a tight muscle can push the nerve up against the bone too. So uh, that's two more likely things than the, the bone on bone mm -hmm. uh, crushing mm -hmm. sort of thing mm -hmm. that we all have in our heads. But um, <clears throat> the other thing is that uh, blood vessels are not supposed to be crimped down on either. And these are very, very, very tiny, tiny little tubules that are the capillaries. And when they're compressed because of, of a tight muscle, you're not getting uh, 
adequate blood supply to the muscles. So it can kind of become like a chronic cycle where something is tight and it's not uh, getting released. And, and I know sometimes people have argued with me, it's like, well, this has been going on for years. It's like, well, if you don't get it taken care of, mm -hmm. it, it, will, it can linger on for right. years and years. So, right. so what massage actually does is we get in there, we manually manipulate that, that, that muscle tissue. We increase the circulation. And with the, the decrease in circulation, you're gonna get a buildup of uh, uh, metabol metabolic waste products like lactic oh, acid, uric oh, right, acid, right. hyaluronic acid. So those are other things that are gonna make you feel sore. So you get when the massage therapist gets in there, they're gonna uh, loosen up that muscle. They're gonna get more circulation going in there. The, the pressure will come off of the nerves and the, uh, the, the blood vessels and then uh, the theoretically it should and then and then you know increase circulation too so you're gonna flush out all those metabolic waste products so that's how um, so you need to drink a lot of water after water a is always I always insist and I, I've done it clean clear that out of there yeah and, I, and I've done it both ways days when I've gotten a massage and I, I didn't get drink extra water and yeah, I'll feel good for a couple of days but if you really load up on the water on the day and actually I usually tell people if you can think about it drink more water the day before the day of and even the day after mm -hmm. because it, it really does help to uh, push out a lot mm -hmm. of those metabolic waste products but mm -hmm. if you'd really load up on the water you could feel fantastic for two or three weeks instead of two oh, or three yeah, days so yeah. I always say you get more bang for your buck uh, yeah. and, and really you know from everything I've, I've read they say that at least half of Americans are chronically dehydrated so uh, it, yeah, it's you know, a lot of a lot of people don't like to drink water. Right, right, you know, right. Yeah, so, I, I know people that just they, they I, don't I, drink any at all. And a lot of uh, a lot of uh, beverages actually have a dehydrating effect. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I've, I've heard like if you drink a cup of coffee, you really need to drink an extra half a glass of water, or you know, soda if you drink that sort of thing too. Right, but, uh, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I did have a question about massage. Now, um, now. Uh, can you accomplish the same things that a chiropractor um, can accomplish? It's, it's uh, different. Is it possible? I, it's different because, I mean, we work on the muscles, the chiropractors work on the bones. And I, I have to say, like, before I ever became a massage therapist, uh, a guy that I went to for massages in Ohio, he told me, he says, you know, he says, you can go to the chiropractor and they can get the bones right. He said, but if the muscles are imbalanced, so good question, by the way. Uh, if the muscles are imbalanced, he said it's not going to hold in place. And I, oh. have, I have a great example. I, when oh, I was yeah. in massage school like 24 years ago, my right hip had been bothering me for <laughs> about six months. Mm -hmm. And I kept going to the same chiropractor once and twice a week. Mm -hmm. And it would, it would be fine for a day, maybe two, and then it was back out mm -hmm. again. And one of our uh, most advanced uh, teachers uh, in school, she'd been doing massage uh, 18 years, and I'm in my 24th right now, but mm -hmm. she said, you know, she goes, if you keep going to the chiropractor for the same problem over and over again, try this. She goes, get a good deep massage, then go right to the chiropractor right after oh, that. I oh, thought, I see. I Have wonder. one appointment scheduled for just before the chiropractor right, treatment. Right, right. And, and I did that. I got a good, and I said, really, like low back and especially that right hip. And I actually had to rush to the, the chiropractic appointment. It might have been two or three minutes late. But same chiropractor who'd been doing the same thing for six months, put that hip back in. I went six years without any problems with oh. that. So it was the muscle that uh -huh. kept pulling it back mm -hmm. out of place. Mm -hmm. And uh, and really, I mean, the way I look at it, I, I've read this uh, in, in other places too, it's just not my opinion, but um, they they actually say that you, you do get a better adjustment. And, and sometimes too, and, and, and they hold better too, but um, sometimes too, uh, and it is oftentimes, well, and, and Paul St. John's, the uh, guy who d developed the entire system of uh, neuromuscular massage therapy, he once told us, he said, you know, one of the things that a chiropractor won't tell you is that the muscles move the bones. And my thing oh, is, yeah. it's like, well, of course the muscle moves the bones. That's what they do. Oh, I get it. They don't tell you that. But in a lot of mm -hmm. cases, they can keep on adjusting you, but they're not taking care of that muscular mm -hmm. uh, aspect of it. And that's what's going to keep you from... Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. staying in place. And on another occasion, I didn't get a massage. I went and had my neck adjusted and I was pulling out of the parking lot. I was gonna take a left turn. I looked left, the traffic was clear. I looked to the right, traffic was clear. I looked back to the left, my neck went right back out. Oh, so um, it, yeah, it's, you know, yeah. and, and so what, what the, the, the guy that I went to for my first massage told me, he said, you know, he said, the thing is, he said, they can put the bone back in. He said, but if the muscle isn't right, it's really not gonna last. He said, if you get enough massage, 
And I've had it happen where, you know, I'm just like giving someone a massage and their back will actually pop and they will just sort of self-adjust because the tension isn't there to pull the, the bone oh, out of place. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's, you know, uh-huh. it's really, and a, a lot of times it's the muscle that's causing the problem. But, you know, the, so the chiropractic is giving you relief, but it isn't really getting to the to the source of the problem. Not, not that I, I go to chiropractors too. I, mm-hmm. I, I just want to yeah, say Yeah, I that, know but, you uh, uh, drive quite a long right, distance just, to go uh, to the went, one that you went, go I went to. Two, two weeks ago yesterday, I went uh-huh. out, to, out to see her. But uh, yeah, so um, is it okay then? Should I, should yes, I start? Uh, then, uh, yes, we can uh, move along uh, to the me, demonstration. Uh, let me get your arms underneath now. the sheet and then um, we'll uh, have you turn over onto your stomach. Whenever you're ready. ready? Yeah. I'll, I'll move that uh, leg thing under you when uh, you get over. You there? Mm-hmm. All right. Let me get this under your ankles. Wherever you like. Any place you want to start with. And I'm going to actually oops, move this over here and not tear my... You know, we've got a couple of stools. Would one of them work better? Um, this is okay, if that's okay, okay with you guys. So I know we're, uh, we're dealing with a little bit of uh, low back uh, pain with Teresa, and I'm going to go down here and check her for leg lengths. I know she mentioned that sometimes she has a little bit of a uh, uh, hip issue, and uh, we line up her ankles and make sure everything's straight. Actually, possibly a little short on the right side, but not, uh, not too, too bad. Not much. And... Um, <laughs> oh gosh. Here we go. Um, what I'm going to start with is doing some of these uh, um, myofascial release uh, techniques. So I'm going to uncover her back and do this. And then you let me know if anything gets too, uh, too painful or uncomfortable as I work, right? So I'm just going to do this. This is just sort of a fascial glide. Uh, We'll start up here and go all the way down to the low back, and then I'll be at on each side and uh, do this from the bottom uh, up. On the you hips. only uh, press down with your fingers at the sides of the spine, is that right? Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to get like I'm there's there's fascia everywhere, but I'm just trying to like okay. just start by by uh, loosening that up, and then uh, here this is sort of like what they call osseous integration, but I I grab her by the uh, that's the top of the hip, and then sort of sink in here and then just sort of, so I'm, I'm, they, the way it's described is they say, think of your hands sinking into to, uh, soft butter and then you try to separate and then you kind of come up against the, uh, there's, a, there's, there's a little bit of, you know, first, um, there, there, it's looser and then you'll get to a point where you can't go any further and then you just kind of hold that. And then I usually just do like a slow, uh, glide after that. That that feel okay, Teresa? Wonderful. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. And I will move your arms from uh, place to place as we go. <laughs> Keep an eye on that cord. <laughs> you never, usually don't have to massage I've, I've never, people I've, with a microphone I've, on, I've, I've do never, you? I've never done this uh, <laughs> while I've been tethered to something. <laughs> yeah. This pressure's okay so far? Wonderful. Keep it coming. And, I, and this, is, this is a little different for me, too. Typically in my office, I have a hydraulic lift table, so I can adjust the, uh, the height, and height of the uh-huh. table from, from time to time. But mm-hmm. uh, So now is there one side, so this is, this is actually called, there's a number of names for this, it's either called strumming or uh, I think John Barnes calls this bear claw, but. Um, bear claw? Yeah, her, her spine is right there and I'm just off of it here and I'm just kind of like digging and sh- like strumming, pulling that, that muscle away from the spine just a little bit. Oh. And then I go all the way up. As far as I can, then usually I get to the outside of the uh, erectors of the the spine, the spinal erectors, and then this way I'm kind of pushing it in. So I'm on either side of that mm-hmm. that um, spinal muscle. Uh, okay. And uh, I'm on the and the inside. I'm trying to pull it away. On the outside, I'm uh, trying to push it towards the spine a little bit, and then 
right in here I'm right on top of it. I'm just going to stay on this side if that's okay with you guys <laughs> that I don't have to uh, worry about the uh, cord. Now I've been to massage therapists that seem a little squeamish about working on the hips but uh, I like to get in here because I mean you know you've studied Tai Chi and, and yoga and mm -hmm. most of us in this country have a lot of hip tension. I mean, there's just, uh, I, I've, I've heard that, heard it said that uh, in the world, the people of the West have the tightest hips of, uh, of those, Americans have the tightest of those, and American men have the tightest. Tighter than women. Have the tightest hips of all, yes. Um, yeah, another uh, thing that, my elbow another part of uh, the body that people experience a lot of tension in is their jaw. Right, right. Yeah, typically the way I'm trained, that, that that typically comes from the neck. When the neck is tight, oftentimes we will we will clench our jaws to balance the the tension between the neck and the uh, the head. Oh, huh. And you see that a lot. It, you wouldn't think of it. I didn't think of it. Uh, but with Fredonia State being a uh, uh, performing arts school, a lot of singers and people that are voice people. Uh, you know, singers, opera singers, stuff like that will typically have um, uh, some tension in their uh, in their jaws. Oh, huh. I never would have thought of that. But. And see, like here, this is like right around where her sacroiliac is. Is it usually worse on this side? I don't recognize one side more okay. than the other. Okay, but that but this right here is what like Paul St. John's calls that the large half moon of the hip, and then right here where the, the greater trochanter is, he calls that the, um, the small half moon of the hip. And from here to here, these muscles sort of radiate out almost like, I always think of this as like the spokes of the wheel. So this is like the hub of the wheel, and then this would be the wheel. And then, so what these, like you have the big gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, here, which that's what a lot of people think you're working on when you're doing this, mm -hmm. but you're really going deep to that. So um, one of the muscles that will actually compress your sciatic nerve is the piriformis. And if you find the top of the trochanter here and then just go straight across, that attaches uh, here to the uh, right along the sacrum. And so if that muscle tightens, uh, if you could see where the attachment is, if this shortens here, it will act to turn the foot out. So it, it actually rotates the whole uh, thigh that way, and then you've oh. got gemellus inferior, gemellus uh, inferior superior, and uh, those are all um, major hip rotators. So mm -hmm. a lot of times people will come to me, we're coming up into that season where we're shoveling snow. Oh, yeah. And we didn't shovel snow all summer right, or fall. Right. And so people come, oh, my back, my back is just killing me. Well, I'll do all this work in their back, and there's really not much going on, but you go to the hip. And that's where all the tension is. Well, oh, when you think about really? it, when you're shoveling snow, you're not just doing this. Yeah. You're picking it up and throwing it. So yeah. you're doing that twisting motion mm -hmm. through, your, uh, um, uh, through your hips. And uh, again, we're not used to doing that kind of a... Uh, so uh, people start yeah. getting back aches at the beginning of the winter because they're not used to it. Right. Right, or you know, sometimes too in the in the springtime when you haven't raked since the fall, you're you're raking and you're kind of using similar mm -hmm. uh, uh, muscles, but in a different way too. But um, so no, is okay. that olive oil? Uh, actually, it's a blend of um, olive and uh, avocado oil. Uh, olive and avocado. Okay. Right. I uh, I actually switched from uh, uh, pure uh, organic jojoba oil. Uh, some time ago to olive oil and uh, I came to find out that uh, avocado oil was a little bit lighter but uh, I, I find this really kind of odd but in just like a few months a couple of clients uh, asked me what I was using and uh, they're both allergic to avocados. Oh. They were having allergic reactions. Yeah, they were having like... Uh, because you were using it during the massages. Right, right. Oh. So let me bring this arm up to your side if I could. Yep, like there. And so here, I don't know exactly what to call this, but a, uh, it's sort of just like thumb gliding up those uh, spinal erectors. But a uh, guy I went to massage school with was uh, from Russia. And uh, he uh, he was actually the massage therapist for the Buffalo Sabres. Oh. And, uh, 
he, uh, he, he this is one of his uh, uh, signature techniques, and I, I think it works pretty good. You, you're okay with that, Teresa? Keep going. So we just kind of glide along along those erectors again, and then I like to here just to get like um, just inside of the shoulder blade and do the same thing. And if I feel something a little bit tight, like that feels like her lower trapezius is a little bit tight. Uh, oh, yeah. I like yeah. to just stay on that for just a little bit, like, uh, you know, really 10, 10 pounds of pressure for about 10 seconds is good. And then we'll just keep on going slowly, sweep all the way up there. But the thing is like through this area, where a lot of people get tension between the shoulder blades, you've got the, the spinal erectors, you've got the the, the lower uh, board, I mean the whole trapezius is basically here and then goes right up to the base of the skull, but then you also have the rhomboids that attach here to the upper uh, inner part of the, the shoulder blade that go to the spine too, so uh, we've got at least like three major slash minor um, um, layers of muscle uh, right there. And this is all good for you. Teresa, you doing good? <laughs> <laughs> Teresa, uh, Teresa uh, tells me that she is a yoga instructor. Um, I'm just mentioning that to you in the viewing audience. So uh, yoga is kind of a type of self-massage too, isn't it? Well, and, and a little in, bit. And in, in massage too, I, I mean, I, I often do incorporate like breathing techniques and uh -huh. um, stuff like that too. Uh, if, if you want, uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on the muscles of her shoulder blade, which a lot of people think there isn't, but there's actually, mm -hmm. again, I mean, her, her lower trapezius is about like right here. So it actually, and it, and it does, it attaches right there on that. Uh, there's a little groove between the um, top of the shoulder blade and the clavicle, the collarbone. But, uh -huh. um, Real quick lesson, I, I didn't know this until I went to massage school. Everybody always talks about the rotator cuff or the oh, rotary uh, cuff. Yes. You know it's part of your shoulder. Yeah, I, you hear a lot of people complain about having injured their right, rotator right. cuffs. But, but there's actually four rotator cuffs on each side. It spells the word sits, S-I-T-S. So um, if you find this, this is called the spine of the scapula. There's a, mm -hmm. there's a ridge of bone there. Above that is the first S. That's your supraspinatus. Then below that ridge, covering the whole rest of the shoulder blade, is the infraspinatus. So we've got SI. Starting here on the side of the shoulder blade is the teres major. So that's our SI and T. The teres major actually goes through the armpit and attaches on the front of the shoulder. Oh. This attaches on the sort of the top of the humerus. Uh, the um, infraspinatus a little bit more to the back of the humerus. And then there's this, the, the second S is underneath her shoulder blade. So it's between the shoulder blade and the spine, and mm -hmm. it's called the subscapularis, and mm -hmm. same orientation as the infraspinatus attaches there. So these muscles will aid a little bit in rotational, uh, you know, turning out this, uh, that uh, supraspinatus will actually uh, assist the trapezius to raise the arm to the side uh, or, or lift the arm up. But I'm gonna actually use, uh, this is, I, I would say more of a rolfing technique, but um, I'm just gonna get on there with my knuckles and then just sweep out towards her uh, humerus this way. You're okay with that? But I think, Teresa, you, you're not just a yoga instructor. You do yoga and other fitness, and uh, you're, you're more of like a fitness professional, right? Correct. I actually began my yoga career through... Uh, I was diagnosed uh, back in 93 with fibromyalgia and it was through uh, taking yoga classes, the experience of yoga classes uh, that helped me to heal, help heal that illness and uh, I was encouraged to take it further and become a natural instructor so that's where my career began and, and I, I do swear by Yoga no swearing, no. I highly recommend actually any form of exercise, uh, whatever works for you, the individual. 
So again, I'm just repeating the same thing I did on that side, on this side, trying to, again, just, you know, what, like I was saying earlier, that model of the, uh, the muscles being tight around the blood vessels, around the nerves. So, you know, I did the, I did the, the, the release this way. I did the, the strumming this way. So this is just like going over the muscles uh, with a glide. So we're, we're pushing blood and lymph and uh, those metabolic waste products through, the, through those little capillaries and... Uh, and you can kind of see the hyperemia where she's getting a little bit red. And yeah, that, I noticed that. That, that yes. shows the increase in circulation. This is just a, uh, again, it's sort of like an effleurage, which is just sort of a glide. And then I grab the, the top of that uh, uh, upper trapezius with that hand. And then, again, we're going to go along the uh, inside the shoulder blade here with this little glide. And again, right there, I feel that that's the lower trapezius on this side. And the lower trapezius, it goes from here to here. So you can imagine when that tightens, its action is to sort of bring the shoulder back and down, which as we were saying earlier with uh, mm -hmm. the kyphosis, mm -hmm. uh, you know, instead of your shoulders being forward, if you're using those muscles properly. And a lot of times, in our, what I see is um, even in younger people that are doing a lot of computer work, you, you have your, a tendency to roll that shoulder forward. Oh, yeah. So it's really not, they're not using it where they're tensing it to bring the shoulder back. It's so there's two things. There's a concentric contraction. So if I was curling a, a dumbbell with my bicep, I, it's under tension this way. That's a concentric contraction because the muscle is shortening. But if I still have that weight in my hand and I'm letting it down, uh -huh. it's still under tension, but it's lengthening it's as I'm doing that. So that's having e the opposite effect. It's, well, it's just, it, you're still keeping the muscle tense, but it's an eccentric contraction. So a lot of times with that lower trapezius, what you find is if somebody's like, like they're, they're, they've got their hand out or they're reaching for their mouse, the muscle is tight, but it's stretched and, and tight at the same time. Oh. So rather than being tight and being in good posture, you're leaning forward or the, or the shoulder is even just a little bit forward, and that's causing that to, uh, to tense up. And of course, you know, then it can cause you to have, you know, str uh, just... Uh, um, you know, muscle tension problems just from overuse in those areas. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. I mean, you know, I, I help people with, uh, uh, you know, carpal tunnel. I uh, have one uh, uh, student right now that's coming to me like twice a week. And, um, uh, but, you know, it, it's maybe mainly like a forearm tendonitis from um, piano. I just play oh, piano is that right? so much. And mm -hmm. uh, so again, we're, I'm doing this knuckle sweep uh, on the, uh, more yeah. or less infraspinatus. Well, uh, you he hear so many people with this um, rotator cuff uh, injuries that they talk about. Uh, what is it that happens? With rotator cuff? Yeah. Well, it, it, it can be a number of different things. Like I said, you've got the four muscles uh, and uh -huh. um, you know, sometimes they will tear. Sometimes they yeah, will fray. Yeah, I've uh, heard people say places. that they had a torn rotator right, cuff. Right, right. Well, now you can say, well, what muscle is that then? And they're like, I don't know, the right side. But there's, there's really four. Uh, mm -hmm. I know uh, my friend um, Steve, we were in martial arts for a long time together, and he, uh, a guy scooped his kick one time and dropped him on his elbow. Oh. And he always had problems with that shoulder. After uh, and, that? Yeah, but it, and he just, you know, tough guy, wouldn't, wouldn't go and have it looked at or anything like that. And then um, it turned out that... Uh, he slipped on ice. I remember Dipti actually fell three times in March of 08 because it was really, oh, really she? icy. And he slipped on ice in his own driveway, landed on that same elbow. And uh, he came to me a couple of times, in, in like a couple times a week for a couple of weeks. And I was like, you know, I, I said, you, you really should get an MRI uh, on that thing. And um, he came back and said, well, he said, they said I tore my rotator cuff. And I said, so what, surgery? And he says, no, he said, you remember when I got dropped on my shoulder like 13 years ago? I'm like, yeah, I was there that night. He said they said that he tore all but like three or four little strands of that muscle with the initial injury when he fell on the wood floor. So there was nothing left. Everything atrophied over all those years of not using it because the muscles were detached. So they couldn't do surgery because there was nothing to sew back together anymore. Oh. So... Um, uh, he ended up just having to go to physical therapy and strengthen oh. everything else around that uh, oh. that area. Um, so, uh, can you tell me how we're doing on time? Um, we have uh, 28 minutes left. Okay, all right. Um, tell you what, let me uh, 
sit here for just a minute and then uh, I'm going to do this sideline technique and then uh, we'll have you go over on your back after that. So just want to sort of open this up a little bit and a lot of like the trapezius and a lot of other uh, neck muscles actually attach like right at the base of the skull mm -hmm. uh, here and that's where a lot of people hold uh, tension, tension. At, at the base of the skull. Right, right. Okay. And, uh, I, that feels pretty From good, doesn't it? From modern lifestyle, huh? <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, it, it's too like, I mean, I always thought it was me, like before I went to massage school, I thought, oh, you know, I carry all my tension up my, my neck and my shoulders, right? Well, I started working in the student clinic and I was like, 95% of everybody has that. Oh, so, wow. Uh, <laughs> now, anybody can believe whatever they want to believe on this, and uh, I have a tendency to believe in evolution. And we asked one of our, our teachers, well, like, why, why, uh, why is that? Like, why is everybody so tight up in there? And this is her explanation. You can take it or leave it. But she said that um, when we were, let's say, less evolved beings, if we were to get in, into an altercation with someone of our own uh, type, usually the first place they would attack you would be they would either bite you here or they would club you there. So whenever we get into tense situations, we kind of start to tense up in our shoulders like that. Oh. But back then, we would probably either A, get into a physical fight, or we would run, and then all that would be burned off. But uh -huh. you know how it is, you're driving along, someone cuts you off in traffic, and you tense up. Mm -hmm. And your boss yells at you, and you tense up. And your spouse and you have an argument, and you tense up in there. But we don't usually get into those physical uh, altercations, and we usually don't run away anymore. Yeah, so, you, would... you know, over time, that just like builds up in there. Yeah, you know, if somebody um, if somebody yells at you in an extremely angry tone of right. voice, um, you it it doesn't doesn't even though the person isn't hitting you or anything, right. there's something about it. It doesn't feel good oh, to yeah. have somebody yeah. acting that way towards right. oh, you. Oh yeah, well, it is kind of a an assault in a in a way. In a way, yeah. Yep. So again, I'm just trying to like increase the circulation in these muscles. I'm using the palm of my hand, I'm using my knuckles. We went and did this sweep down through here with the knuckles too. And, and I think uh, um, you can see by my techniques, and I'm thinking Teresa would agree that uh, this is not necessarily kind of your, as I, I usually call it, and no, no offense to anybody if that's what you do, but I, <laughs> I call it foo foo fluff and buff. Uh, poo poo uh, fluff and buff. <laughs> well, I mean, I, to me, I mean, I see. I've been to massages where all they do is like rub a little oil on you and just like kind of move it around, and uh, <laughs> th th that really doesn't help me. And uh, mm -hmm. like I said, if, if that's the kind of massage you like, uh, uh, no offense, but it doesn't really do much for me. So I like deeper work. I like to give uh, deeper work. So um, tell you what. Let's so this uh, is kind of a you, deep tissue massage, right? Exactly. Then. Let's okay. just have you, let me get that um, out from under your knees. Oops. <laughs> You're getting tangled I up keep, again, I aren't you? forgetting <laughs> about that. All right, Teresa, if you could lay on your uh, left side facing Gail. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Teresa. I, I need your hips as close to the edge of the table towards me, like towards me, this, towards me. Yeah. This way, this way, towards me. I prefer me. the deep tissue A little massage. bit closer. I need you to about four inches closer, maybe just your hips. You could leave your upper body there if you want. Yeah. Um, very good there. Let me, uh, I want you to have the top leg straight and bend the bottom leg forward just a little bit. I'll get that. And then I will warn you ahead of time. This, uh, you'll be wondering why you did this today. But this is, this is a little bit of a painful technique. But um, Paul St. John's, uh, who does all kinds of cadaver work. He's always uh, oh, really? uh, cutting up things to, to find out where everything attaches. Mm -hmm. He said that between the top of the trochanter and the uh, rim of the pelvis here, you've got this area here, he said the tightest muscles of the body are right here and the thickest connective tissue of the body. And reason why is these are pelvic stabilizers. Now I've had people say, oh, they're like shock absorbers. It's like not really, they would be more like uh, more like your sway bar linkage, I guess, if you know automobile uh, <laughs> um, uh, nomenclature. But uh, essentially, every time Teresa's heel has hit the hit the ground or hit the floor since she was able to walk, either walking, running, dancing, jumping, every time the heel touches the ground, this has to tighten up, and that's what keeps your pelvis level. Because if she didn't tighten up in here, and these are the hips, if you're not tightening up on this side and you put your weight here, 
that would make this hip go up, and then as you walk back and forth, you see some people that actually do walk like that where their hips go up and down, yeah. but most of us are actually activating this muscle, which you should, so when you step on this side, this tightens up and it keeps your pelvis level, so the weight is here and then the pelvis stays, uh, stays even, so uh, these muscles are usually uh, pretty tender and not really uh, used very, or not really worked on very much, so uh, if you need to cry or scream or punch me, I understand. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, fine. So we kind of just go back and forth on that a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I, I hold this bone right here and then I drop her leg off behind like this. If you want to reach up over your head with this uh, right arm and then we'll stretch that whole side of your body. You feeling okay there? So now we're stretching, you probably feel the stretch just below my hand. I'm gonna let yeah. this go and that stretch will go into your low back. And then we go all the way up to the shoulder blade and stretch that whole side out really good. You're okay? You won't let me fall, will you? No, no, absolutely <laughs> not. I always, I always tell people, I always tell people, I've never lost one yet. So now I need you to try to let the weight of your leg go. Let me have it, yeah, there you go. And then this is going to be a little more painful <laughs> when I do this because now that I have this leg up, this muscle is re uh, relaxed in here, so I'll be able to get a little bit more deep in there. And I am not proud of the fact that when Paul St. John's did this to me, I screamed and cried and punched the table and <laughs> tears were flowing and he was completely unapologetic. He's like, was that a little tender? I was like, how about extremely uh, <laughs> painful? And he's like, whatever. You okay? Okay, so that's enough on that, and then I'm going to do that again. I'm going to drop this leg off and stretch that. Hmm. And then we're going to go all the way up here again. So this is kind of like, almost like, uh, what is that, the uh, side bend in, uh, in yoga. Uh, and then what I'm going to do too here, though, is oftentimes, especially with athletes, the IT band, iliotibial tract or iliotibial band, goes from here at the hip to just below the knee, and it's considered a proprioceptive uh, structure. So essentially, every time you take a step, there's a little muscle that comes off of here, the ASIS, and goes into this. this is, it's, it's kind of a strange structure, this, this IT band in the body, because it's a tendon that has this little muscle attached into the middle of it. So this tightens and loosens to help you keep your balance as you walk. So I'm just gonna do like kind of this fascial sweep Mm -hmm. Up her IT band, you okay there? Yeah. Now you hear some people uh, talk about having sciatica. Uh, right. Um, well, it's something in the lower back that pinches a certain the sciatic. That's nerve. that's the typical uh, medical Western medical explanation to it. But uh, remember when I was working on the on the hip and I said that you have those uh, rotational muscles. The the piriformis actually shares the sciatic notch with the sciatic nerve. You want to go to the other side now? Oh, um, yeah. Um, so the, so if the piriformis is tight, the piriformis will actually, and move the hips right back to me, the piriformis will actually, maybe just another inch, uh, and then straighten the top leg. Uh, the piriformis can actually push the sciatic nerve right up against the bone because in the pelvis, oh. um, there's, uh, there's a little notch and there's five ner nerve roots that do come out of the low back that all come together into one they go through the sciatic notch and the piriformis muscle goes right over the top of that. So from what I've read, 93% of the time, um, sciatic pain comes from a tight piriformis pushing that up against her. So you know you can go in and have your, your back surgery and sometimes it doesn't do a thing because oh, they're really? not dealing with the, uh, um, uh, the muscular aspect mm -hmm. of it. So. So. so again, I'm on, uh, on her left side in this area where, and, and these muscles, like I said, uh, pelvic stabilizers, but we're mostly like gluteus medius, gluteus minimus uh, in, uh, in here that, uh, uh, like I said, you use those every step you take. And uh, I know Paul said uh, he, he didn't keep track because he didn't know he was gonna be breaking scalpels, but he said, on one cadaver, he said, I swear, he said, I must have broken at least, um, and if you want to reach up with this hand, maybe. Um, 
he said he must have broken like around seven or eight scalpels trying to, to uh, cut through that, uh, um, you know, this tissue here because mm -hmm. whoever it was was extra tight. But he says, I don't care who you are or what you did for a living. He said that is always the tightest muscle in the body and mm. the most the the uh, mm -hmm. um, thickest connective tissue mm -hmm. too. So, yeah, so um, getting back to the sciatic nerve pain, right. uh, massage therapy can relieve that in people. Absolutely, that have absolutely. It. I've helped a lot of people with that. Yeah, and like you were saying, the jaw pain. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I've taken uh, a couple of uh, neuromuscular courses, like specific to uh, um, relieve TMJ, and mm -hmm. you know, oftentimes you do. Uh, work on, I mean, I, I actually will glove up, I'll wear a, a nitrile glove and actually um, get inside the person's mouth. You actually work on the floor of the mouth. Uh, you oh. actually massage the tongue. Uh -huh. uh, you, you massage the muscles like, like one finger in and one finger, like maybe your thumb outside and your uh, um, finger inside of the, uh, the cheek. Um, if you could go on to your back, but down oh, off I've the face. Oh, I've never heard thing. of that before, massaging the inside of somebody's mouth. Right, right. Huh. Um, but down a little bit off the face thingy. Yeah, I'll take that completely off. Let me get this, uh, ooh. <laughs> I suppose I get used to this cord eventually. <laughs> All right, yeah, lift, lift up your legs and let me get that under there. And actually, because we are working on the, uh, uh, the low back with her, this is a technique I often try to use, but uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go one, two, and then I'm gonna be a quick pull on each side. I'm gonna do three on each side, but it's gonna be one, two, three, and I'll do that three times. So, uh, ready? One, two, three, ankle re release, and then one, two, three, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. There, didn't feel anything uh, go on that side, but you did feel your ankle go on that, uh, Right side. Okay. So now, let me come over here and then we'll take this off and set it down. Are you going to massage her face muscles? Oh, I was going to do work on the neck oh. primarily now, but do you have any jaw pain? Not at all. None? She heard that thing about me going inside the mouth. <laughs> no, none. <nothing>. No, no. <laughs> Not, Not on television. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know, that one thing, too, is a lot of times you wouldn't think of it, but that, that tension she had between the shoulder blades, mm -hmm. oftentimes, sometimes the muscles on the front of the shoulder in the chest can actually be uh, sore. part of it. Yeah. That's tender right there. It is. Yeah. So there's actually three heads to the uh, pec minor. There's a um, clavicular head right underneath the clavicle, right underneath the collarbone. That doesn't seem too bad, although I'm, how does it feel to you? doesn't feel tense to me. You're okay there? But then there's, so that's the clavicular head, and then there's a sternal head that's usually at about a 45 degree angle, and the right side on her, I feel there's some tension there. Yes, that feels more tender. A little bit there. I mean, you're right-handed though, right? And then there's a, there's a uh, costal head that just goes down, it's like the front side of the, uh, the armpit, and uh, that goes to the ribs, but uh, mm -mm. not bad there either. For some reason that right one, uh, the middle one, that's a little bit tight there, but okay. So we do this, I usually like to do some uh, kind of finger sweeps up the, the neck this way, uh, just again to get that circulation going and uh, loosen it up. And then um, also, let's turn you to the left. Uh, there's a groove between like her um, transverse processes of her spine are here mm -hmm. and then the um, spinous processes are here. So if you think of it, there's, there's like a 90 degree angle with bones, uh, you know, going in each direction. And this whole area between that 90 degrees is all these muscles in here. And so uh, this is a fairly deep technique, but I'm pressing in and then just slowly gliding down uh, that's called the lamina groove. I'm just going down that um, uh, set of muscles in there. You're okay with the pressure? Yes. And um, again, going back to that model, we're trying to uh, release the um, 
the uh, the tight the muscle tightness against those other structures the the nerve tissue mm -hmm. and uh, increase circulation move out any metabolic waste products that could be in there and again me with my knuckles I like to get on top of there I someone taught me this and they called it the velvet glove technique but uh, anyway I feel it's that in my forehead yep yep do you do you get headaches at all or no not generally no okay you sometimes mean something you just did on her neck? She yeah, felt it in I'm, her I'm forehead. Like, I'm just using my knuckles here and sweeping mm -hmm. down, downward towards the towards the back, and towards the you know the top of the table basically. And uh, but that's the upper trapezius, which attaches right at the base of the skull. And there's actually two trigger points in that muscle that if those trigger points are tight, it, it's kind of silly to say this, but it's not that you'll experience what you think is a headache, but it's really pain from here referring the pain oh. up to, to here. So it's uh -huh. like a referral uh, type of headache. And then mm -hmm. I like to I like to grab the, the skull here a little bit again using that osseous connection to the bone and then sort of push down on the shoulder. That gives a nice stretch from the, the base of the skull down to the uh, um, about where the palm of my right hand is. And then we'll just sweep up again this way and you're doing okay with this. Mm And then we'll go to the opposite side, so we'll turn you to the right. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I think we had the better camera angle before on this, but everybody saw that side, so I'm yeah, just doing the same, the, same thing here. Yeah, they did. So now did. Gail can see. Now I can see it. Everybody <laughs> else could see it on the other side. Right, right. So again, I mean, and you can. I oftentimes I will go back and forth, like if if Teresa had more. Um, you know, specific like neck issues, if it was a, uh, you know, whiplash or, um, oh, you yeah. know, some other kind of a neck injury, which uh, um, actually recently had a uh, college hockey player that uh, I, I said, well, it almost sounds like you got a whiplash. He said, that's exactly what happened. I said, somebody blindsided you? He said, that's exactly what happened. Hmm. He was going for the puck and somebody came up from behind him and hit him. And, uh, oh. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so, I mean, there, and there's a lot of little tiny, tiny uh, sort of intrinsic muscles up in here that attach, like, just from the spinous process to the transverse processes. Some attach on the, on the skull, some attach, like, like up underneath. And, and actually, you know, a lot of the anatomy books will show you that, let's say, the upper trapezius will attach here at the base mm -hmm. of the skull. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes, uh, from what uh, my people that do all these... Uh, um, um, dissections or uh, cadaver work, they say that sometimes the, the, some of the fibers can actually go up to an inch and a half to two inches up onto the skull. So oh. sometimes it's not a bad idea to actually massage on the actual uh, skull itself oh. Oh, up a little yeah. bit. Just, you know, helps to relieve yeah. a little bit more of the, the actual tissue that's, uh, that's tight there. But uh, mm. then we'll do this stretch here again like that. And how are we on time? Ten minutes. Oh, okay. Doing good then. So that opens that up a little bit. And then since you asked, we will do a little bit. So, so here um, there, there's three major muscles of mastication or chewing, biting, however you want to say mm -hmm. that. Um, the masseter is here. It, it, it's, uh, it, I'll, I'll show it on this side. It attaches. Well, you can see that. Uh, it, mm -hmm. it goes from here, from the... the this is called this there's a curve here that's called the ramus of the mandible but from here it goes up and it attaches just under the cheekbone and that's your masseter one of the major jaws or major muscles of chewing or biting mm -hmm. um, believe it or not up here you feel that a little bit on the, it feels a little tight on the right right it's not bothersome right but you, you feel like there's a little bit of tenderness maybe mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's the tendon for the temporalis muscle. So believe it or not, your jaw muscles go like way up into here. This is actually the tendon for it, and the tendon actually goes underneath the cheekbone. Can you open wide for me for just a sec? It actually attaches there, and uh, that's good. And that's the coronoid process of the mandible that comes. It, so, so when this tendon pulls, it actually, the pivot of the jaw is just behind that, uh, coronoid process. So if the coronoid process is being pulled up, like here, if this is the coronoid process being pulled up by the temporalis muscle and the, the thumbs are the pivot point, uh, that also helps to close the jaw. The muscle is actually about as big as the palms of your hands and in front of 
and above the, the ears. So uh, a lot of people think like, oh, that feels so good, but there's really no muscles up in there. And if you really look at an anatomy uh, chart there, I mean, there's muscles that control our, our uh, facial expression. So mm -hmm. there's muscles here that'll raise your eyebrows. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, muscles that uh, help you smile and, you know, furrow your brow and <laughs> other things too. Uh, but the one that I can't really show you, I can describe, but it's so, so we got the masseter, we got the temporalis, but um, starting inside that um, curve of the jaw, the angle of the ramus, ram, ramus, uh, or ramus of the mandible, there's a muscle that goes straight up and it actually attaches just behind the upper teeth. So hmm. if I had the gloves, I would go inside and that is often very, very tender. And you don't have to do much. I mean, you just kind of uh, get on that. But like I said before, I mean, I would get inside the mouth and I mean, you literally work like the muscles of the lip, like thumb outside and the finger inside and you work all the muscles of the cheek that way. And, uh, you know, it's, again, it's massage. It uh, ends up getting more circulation there, loosens those muscles up. Um, and then these here, too, I mean, if, again, in a whiplash, the uh, um, SCM, sternocleidomastoid, it actually goes from uh, the sternum, the clavicle, and it goes up to the mastoid process. A lot of times that muscle tension in there can actually cause you to have like hearing problems, hearing oh, loss. Oh, really? Well, wow. Because like, I mean, you look at like where her, the um, the whole of the ear the uh, uh, goes and there's the mastoid process and it, it's in that same bone. So I mean, they're less than an inch apart. And again, the fibers for that are supposed to attach there, but some of them uh, go further up in. And uh, I know Paul St. John's has, has told us on a number of occasions that he has really drastically improve certain people's hearing uh, just by doing some of these uh, neck releases. And I know the, the one woman who was one of his um, kind of primary teachers, or at least she used to be, um, she was a nurse up in Vermont. And uh, it turned out that she was in her late 30s and already needed bifocals. And her insurance plan wouldn't pay for bifocals because um, she was too young still, oh. according to them. So. Mm -hmm. She found out that the cost to her for having the um, have the bifocals was the same amount of money that it would cost her to, to travel to Florida and get these treatments from from Paul St. John's, who claimed that he could improve her eyesight uh, without the corrective lenses just by working. There's there's actually ways that you can work the muscles that control the eyes with Q-tips in the upper and the lower eyelids, mm -hmm. which I have mm -hmm. taken that course from him too, mm -hmm. but. Um, so this woman went down there and she said, not only did she not need bifocals, but her eyesight improved so much that she had to get another like weaker prescription because her eyesight improved so much. And she said, the amazing thing was, he never even did the techniques around her eyes. He just did this by releasing her neck. And she was so convinced that it was such a beneficial thing that she, I mean, she continued to be a nurse, but she did all of his courses like multiple times and then became like one of his top, uh, top oh, teachers. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. um, well, you know, um, uh, there are other things, just certain lifestyle changes can improve your eyesight too. Oh, right. Yeah, um, diet. I, I actually, uh, though I'm 69 years old now, and uh, back in March, uh, when I went for my annual eye checkup, uh, the eye doctor told me that uh, you're gonna need um, to get new lenses because there's been a, a change in your vision. And I right. said, in what way? And she said, well, actually your vision has improved. Hmm. Um, you know, I've been uh, like nearsighted in my left eye and uh, farsighted in my right eye for a long time and uh, she said they're getting closer together it's like um i uh, she said i was less nearsighted uh i'd become less nearsighted in my left eye and less farsighted in my right eye hmm. it was like they self-correct they were moving closer together the right. two eyes so well, maybe if you live another 70 years, you won't need them at all, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> I have heard of it, though. I mean, I, I, I have heard uh, 
you know, the, the certain lifestyle habits can improve your eyesight. Okay, I want to do a little stretching because uh, we were working on her low back. Mm -hmm. Must be there it is. The uh, chair. Okay, there. we're down to a little over three minutes. Okay, let me have you bring your knees to your chest, and then just want to kind of push. That's okay on your low back. Okay. Then how about you hold on to your knees with your hands, and then let's bring your chin down. to do this little rocking. rocking thing like that a little bit. It's a good thing I didn't ask somebody that's six, ten, and 300 pounds. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then let's have you lay back down. Uh, and then uh, how about, um, let me have you put, why don't you put both your feet down, yep. And then can you, uh, like the, uh, the yoga through the whole stretch, cross like one knee over the uh, opposite ankle, I mean ankle onto the opposite knee? Absolutely, spinal but, twist. <laughs> But but knee up, both knees up, both first, knees up. and then and then cross one over, one ankle over the knee. Oh, I know what he's talking so about. Put this yeah. ankle ankle on your <laughs> knee. <laughs> yeah, right up here on the top of your knee, like that. Yep. And then we're gonna do this and that. You feel that stretch in this hip. Yes. And then actually, let's set this down, and then let's just drop this whole assembly that way. And then you'll feel a little bit different stretch up in here, right? And then let's switch them, bring it back up, and then switch your ankle crossings. Oh, not again. <laughs> you got it? Yeah. There we go. And then again, let's do it this way. And then I want you to set this one down and bring that that way. Oops, we're coming up. Oh, um, okay. And then un uncross, uncross again. And just put your both feet down, <laughs> and then let's have, let's just drop you this way, and then bring him back this way, and then drop that way. I don't know. This might be an R-rated show. Yeah, you know, I I kind of like to do that that move. You know, when you Straight lay on your back with your arms out at your sides, and then just yeah. drop the knees to each side. Um, yeah, well, that's something that I do a lot when I'm practicing yoga. Right, right. And that's, you know, how I want to say uh, massage and uh, yoga are kind of uh, tied together. And I, I think it was after, uh, well, I think I started yoga in um, January of 93, I think is when I met you. And mm -hmm. then uh, can you just reach up and grab me by the wrists? Mm -hmm. Hang on. Then we're just gonna pull you this Actually, way. if you need a few more minutes, I'm allowed to run over a little bit. Um, um, it's up to you. Um, you know. Back down. You tell me. I guess we could ask Teresa how she feels now. I have plenty of time. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, how do you feel? How, how do you feel, feel physically? Dancing? <laughs> how do you feel physically, though, right, right now? Probably Warm like she could go to sleep. Warm and fuzzy. <laughs> Relaxed. Well, and, and I know we, we put up the, uh, um, the benefits of massage and, uh, on the screen at, at some point. And uh, mm -hmm. again, if anybody needs... Oh, uh, yeah, it's up there now. Yeah. So you see the physical benefits, relaxed body, Emotional calms the Emotional benefits. Right. Reduces anxiety, enhances self-image. Provides that that's to me the the feeling of well being. If that was the only thing that you got from it, to me it, it would be worth it. Cause, right. You know, for a few days after you get a massage, you're just like, wow, I just feel like, just feel so good. You know. Nurtures and stimulates emotional growth. Right. Well, and you know, I, I actually was going to work for a psychotherapist when I first got out of massage school, and my one of my my actually primary massage teacher did that. And uh, she always used to tell us, she said, the issues are in the tissues. So The and issues are in the tissues. And, and they, they, there are people like in Esalen uh, in, in California that they can actually look at your body and read you and they can actually tell you like the different types of e physical and emotional trauma that you've experienced just by looking at you. Oh, oh yes, I can believe it. Um, I remember there was a naturopathic doctor uh, that I used to go to once upon a time, and 
uh, I remember he could tell me all kinds of stuff about myself by feeling my pulse. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, you yeah, know, uh, medicine, it was yeah. amazing. He could always tell me how I was feeling at a certain mm -hmm. moment. Yep. Uh, and he was always right. Well, the same thing. I went to an iridologist in uh, in Ohio at one point, and he was looking at the iris of my eye mm -hmm. with the scope, and he literally told me my medical history. It was like you had swollen glands and took an antibiotic for that when you were like five. I'm like. I forgot all about that, yeah. And, yeah. and he, he could tell me every time right, in my life right. I had taken an antibiotic because he said it doesn't really he said it doesn't really get rid of the, the, the virus or the bacteria or whatever you have. He said he actually he said it actually shrinks it down into this capsule which is eventually stored in your intestine and there's a, a reflex point from that that goes to a certain part of the iris and they can actually see that oh, yeah, uh, in, yeah. In, your, in your irises. Yeah, I, I remember an iridologist uh, looking at my eyes one time and, and she told me some stuff that was absolutely correct. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, Well, we have used up all our time, so whenever you're finished. Yeah. Well, um, I, I, I can be done at any, any moment. I just okay. figured that uh, however you want to end this. Oh, okay. Um, I guess I, we've come to the end of another episode of Fresh Perspectives and I will see the rest of you and the viewing audience in a couple of weeks on the next episode. <laughs>